the, the product market fit, the, the MVP, the, the, the way they uh, interact with each, each other, the way they work. Uh, so a lot of work value uh, that, that the startups recognize on the combinator and which returns in value for the investors because when investors look at the startup presented by the combinator, all that work has already been done. Um, some of the startups uh, here has not gone through our programs, some they are part of our program. We select a mix because there are other interesting uh, companies out there that we wanted to present to you today. Um, uh, I think that's, that's all uh, for this introduction. Uh, let's, uh, if you have any other questions before uh, we start, please raise your hand. Um, take into account that uh, there is this microphone. Microphone. If when you ask question later in the Q and A to the startups, uh, someone will uh, hand the, the microphone to you. So, um, so enjoy, enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, um, let's go for it. First company presented today is uh, Donkey Jobs. I leave you with Alison. Thank you very much. And, uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, can you hear me well? OK. Well, uh, I'm Edison Valdez. I am a software developer. I've been working as freelance for about 14 years. Uh, I've been working for the best freelance platform in the world, such as Fiverr, Upwork, Freelance.com. And thanks to that experience, I am so uh, happy to understand the needs and the fears that freelancers have. On steady incomes, no insurance, no health, no vacation. Poor folks, Thank you. the presentation. To my presentation. Here. How does it, sorry, how does it work? Vamos a empezar ahora, cuatro minutos. Ahora? Yo voy a ir now, arriba y abajo. Hacia acá, hacia abajo, ya. Four minutes. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Okay, well, that's why we created Donkey Jobs. What's Donkey Jobs? Donkey Jobs is the freelancer revolution. Uh, we are more than a marketplace. We are more than uh, a freelance application. We actually have all our freelance covered. For the first time in the industry, we have created benefits for the freelancers. Um, our freelancers will have insurance, thanks to FinTech products, partnerships, our freelancers will have also vacation and other perks, thanks to other participant partners joining in this uh, endeavor. So this is uh, the main information about the Donkey Jobs project that we will cover the freelancers. Hold on. Okay. A very important information about all this is maybe you don't know, but our according to reliable sources, 80 percent, 80, 80 percent of the worldwide workforce in the world will be using freelancers by 2030. This is huge. Last year, just last year, the volume market that this industry were uh, transitioning was about two trillion, two trillion US dollars. Okay, just last year, the two twenty year for the COVID scene. Okay, uh, but we have focused our efforts on a niche, and this niche is the Spanish speak, uh, Spanish speaking community. This specific target market has more than two billion dollars. Intersections. Okay, how to make money? 
Okay. Uh, our business is a commission-based model where we will be charging 18% on each transaction. Okay. We also have other collateral benefits since we have a um, community and a marketplace with different partners, so we expect our freelancers to be purchasing products on our platform. The commission range will be from 2% up to 20% in benefits. Okay, okay let's have a deep, uh, deep dive on uh, the competitors. Well, you might recognize some of them, you're really uh, famous, but what we really are focused on is we want to become the leading freelance platform for the Spanish speaking community in this initial phase. Uh, it always means that we will be open for the whole and the entire world. But this is our main focus. And the second uh, opportunity that we want to uh, get is we want to be the first, which we are, freelance company that provide freelance and cover freelance and improve their lives. If they're, if they're happy, for sure, uh, we will get more clients. And you may probably know that Spanish is just behind the Chinese. So Spanish is uh, emerging economy it's an emerging and dynamic economy, Latin, Spain, and in the, just in the United States, we have almost 57 uh, million uh, speaking uh, Spanish users. Time is done. We finish. Done? We Four 50 minutes. Seconds. 50 seconds more to finish. 50 seconds. Time. Okay. Uh, what and how are going to use the money for. Why? So we have validated the idea. We have a minimum viable product ready. We have applications, iOS, Android applications ready. We have so far with a little effort, 10,000 registered users. So now it's time to make this business grow. So that's why we're investing 70% of the expected raising for sales and marketing, okay? So this is uh, what we are going to use the money for. A second. And that's it. Make sure that we have something else. Okay, and this is, the, this is our team, or at least the, the faces. Okay, this is me. Uh, this is Jasmine and Montero. Elena Torres, Miguel Ferres, which they are all over there. We are done. Eric Brieva and Petya. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. 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 Thank so, so I have a question, I understand, which are the main competitive advantage you find against uh, players like at work? The main? The main competitive advantage you find in your project mm -hmm. that uh, it's not being fulfilled by the bigger players in the market? Actually, the, our, our uh, most important feature is that we have, that we will build for the first time a Spanish-speaking community of freelancers, we want to be their part. We want to be uh, the first community to improve their lives on the, the freelancer side. This is uh, the main competitive advantage that, that we want to focus on in this space. Uh, how do you people, uh, how do you people stay on the platform? So when they do 18% the first time um, for, the same, for the same customer, Next time, how do you get them to send the platform rather than engage, engaging directly with the person? Do you understand the question? Yeah, yeah, well, I, I think I, I got your question. Uh, first off, we want to try to make happier freelancers, which they are our backbone. They are actually the root of the application. So we understand, and in my opinion, since I was being freelancing for more than 14 years, 
if I am happy in an application, I'm getting perks, I'm getting money, so uh, this is the, the best guarantee that I can uh, treat well uh, possible a future customer in order to become a repetitive mm -hmm. customer. I'm not sure if it's... Well, I mean, it depends on the same, same um, end user. So if I sell to him, he's going to be 18, you, he takes, you take 18%. But we have a relationship now, so next time I say, hey, listen, let's just do direct and forget yeah. about the platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a really good question. And uh, uh, for sure, fortunately, we have a, uh, an answer for that. Actually, we want to create a, we want to create a, a frame of security. So if the user understands that if they are inside the frame, they are secure. So they are dealing uh, directly with the application. So it's really risky, and this is something that maybe if you have hired a freelance before, you understand. So you prefer to stay in, in the frame of the application, the terms and the guidance of the application, which grants you uh, secure, secureness to the transaction. And this is, this is why also we have technology to filter conversations and other ty uh, types of um, irregular uh, behaviors within the platform. I have a quick question. Uh, you, you said you have 10,000 uh, registered users. Yeah. Can you explain how that is really split between the ones offering their services versus the one buying their services? And, and how many transactions have you actually completed? Yeah, really good question. Uh, in this first stage, we have talked our efforts. So you all might heard about the chicken and egg problem. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, we have just focused our efforts on building the freelance application, trying to filter by most talented and balanced freelancers. So this is our focus has been put majority on this uh, side, even though. We have transaction. They, the, the freelancers, they have uh, created transactions according to their needs. So, and uh, in this, we have transaction around ten thousand US dollars, just ten thousand US dollars. We haven't focused yet on sales, but even though we have uh, created uh, a small traction uh, at this stage. Any other question? Okay. What's the main difference between the Latin players and non -kishos? The Latin players? Like Workana? Yes, uh, th this is a really good question. Workana uh, is, uh, presumably, will be our competitor, but we have absolutely uh, a different project. We are a marketplace. We are not biting, you know? The, everything, it's, uh, the secret is behind the model, the business model. We are a marketplace where people with, uh, okay, I need a web page or I need a logo, I need a video creator. They just search through the, our catalog of freelancers and proposals and they just purchase whatever proposal they have, they want. Workana and other competitors, you need to send a BA request and you need to wait, you know, the turnaround time it's not really what the customer expect, and that's why applications like Fiverr now is worth in about seven billion dollars. And this is basically the main difference between Workana and us. We are a marketplace where anybody can just put an item in the in the shopping cart, purchase the item, and be supported by the application. More questions? Uh, why now? Uh, why now? Why now? Great. Uh, well, and this is all about the momentum. Right now is the momentum because, as I uh, already explained, by 2030, which means in about eight years, about 80%. Uh, the, and this is uh, and this is our uh, reliable sources such as Forbes expect to have 
80% of the worldwide workforce to be using freelancer. You know, the uh, coronavirus crisis make people understand that, okay, it's, it's possible to work from home. It's possible to <laughs> not go into the office. And the internet, the X and Y generation, our children, they want to work from home if it's possible. So this is the moment and this is why we are ambition this project uh, right now. Edison, let me ask you a last question, please. Um, here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you plan to offer, uh, you said that you will be offering insurance services, financial services, for example, financial services, uh, who, who, why and how uh, are you planning to offer, for example, financial services to the community of freelancers? Yes, uh, very good question. Um, we have understand the, the, the need and obviously this is something great for any friends to have banking services, to have insurance services, but it's a really good business, okay? So if we expect to have around five million uh, registered users, if you are uh, an answer tech, if you are a bank, I probably think that you may want to join us, uh, a community of five, poten five million potential clients. It's a really good business. So we have ambition this benefit to our freelancers mm -hmm. with the promise of benefit, a partnership. So insur insurance company, banking, companies, they will be uh, glad to join the 5 million users community. Okay? Thank you so, so much. Thank you very Big much. applause for him, please. Gracias, ahora vamos a seguir con nuestro siguiente proyecto cuota. Giovanni, cuando quieras, tienes cuatro minutos y seis de preguntas. Ya. Un momento. Ya, aquí. Apunta aquí. Arriba y abajo. No, te lo voy pasando. Empezamos. Hola. Hola, hola. más? Hola.
Hello everybody, thanks for having me. I'm Giovanni Buenos, CEO and co-founder of Quota. Okay. And what is Quota? Quota is the, the company that aims to uh, create and help other company to make happier tenants, landlords, and real estate agents. How? Well, first of all, we realize that um, rental is growing uh, very fast and is catching the ownership, especially in Southern uh, European uh -huh. country. Okay. And this is for different reasons. First of all, younger generation are changing and switching job more often, and they cannot afford, as their parents or their grandparents, the, uh, to buy it properly. So on the other hand, we have uh, landlords that are mostly worried about missing payment damage for their property. So they, you can see they are clashing uh, needs, no? Um, so this is because we decide to create quota to make starting from create tool tools uh, to reduce the financial burden for the next generation to provide as much protection as possible to uh, uh, landlords and meanwhile helping real estate agents to make a faster and better the job. How how would I want to do that? Sorry. Okay. First of all, launching the first uh, Spanish micro insurance that uh, replace the rental deposit. Because this represent a higher cost, especially at the beginning of every year rental, almost 25% of the, of the one year cost. And so we want to reduce this first burden and with a, a, a small fee that uh, it's equal to just a fraction of one month rental fee. We want to provide the landlord with the same security as he has the cash in his pocket. And everything based on introducing uh, AI profiling system that provides transparency to the whole process. We call it quota score. Okay. And we want to, we have the ambition to do what this company did in their respective industry. They introduced technology, they introduced an, a scoring system, and this way they increase the quality of the, of the whole operational procedures and they introduce transparency okay so our our uh, qualifying system for tenants especially is based on different type of sources you will use AI we use about machine learning you will use some blockchain technology you will pack all, all this fancy technology together and provide a faithful profile of what is the tenant current status and also the past trying also to provide a forecast for this, for this risk of create a damage or a missing payment. So we collect at the moment up to 25 different sources using open banking, using um, review or social network, uh, LinkedIn or other public sources about their job history, the missing payment, and we put all together in a, in a database that you need in different clusters, and then in the future we will have this, this faster validation assigned to each person a different cluster. And these ways we can tailor new product, like the first one that we are going to issue, that is microinsurance, to the precise profile of, of, the, of the tenant. Some insurance experts say that if you improve just 30% of the scoring of a, of, a, of a client, you can improve up to 30% of the profitability of your product. So it's the long tail which makes the difference. And meanwhile, we are um, distributing all this product through a, a mini CRM that we provide to real estate agency to distribute this kind of product and make more common. Okay, so okay, this is what we did until now in terms of technology. I will finish with some validation. Okay, Take a second. Okay, it's enough. So this is a bit of validation what we get until now. Yeah. Uh, Okay, this is the market, the ambitions. This is what other companies that, that have similar model did, especially we are looking to lemon it and to kind of to bring their model together to create a, a, a European version of what it did. And this is the team, co founder. This is an advisory uh, pool of people that is helping us to understand of this different market, real estate, insurance, and technology. I want to have a, some. Slides for for the for the questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you talk us about how much money are you raising and which valuation? I think it was not in the. Yeah, it's 
it's uh, it's in the sound of the soup or this is what we raised until now. It's 100 k by uh, an early stage venture capital fund. And this is what you are looking for. Actually, it's between equity and, and convertible notes. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, uh, can you tell us about, about the team? Or first? Uh, So, me and Jesus are the co-founder. We actually uh, uh, met in an incubation program. We have seven very similar profile, apart from the, the age gap. He's 27, I'm just turned 12, 45. And um, I'm taking care of all the business part, uh, especially a large partnership and the strategy, and assessing the other co-workers. And he's taking uh, care of the product. Uh, actually, I have uh, just some some insight about that. I am forty-eight uh, percent of the forty-eight uh, percent in thirty-seven, and fifty percent is it's in the own of the, of the fund. Okay, and the rest of the team is uh, mix of salary and promise of equity in the future. So very very committed uh, teamwork. So we are covering all the different area, market and sales at the moment, especially. Uh, Maria is coming from the real estate market five years, working with real estate agents. Carlos is experiencing uh, customer uh, customer engagement, and these young, some of especially uh, the data science and the full stack developer, even if they are very young, they are. You should look to their history. They are impressive, so young and so talented. Mm -hmm. And we are supported also by some uh, uh, professional legal because the framework is quite uh, innovative in this this way. Are you full time or not full time? Double full time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't talk about Dreamloft as in your competitors. Yeah, there is some Spanish player who are trying to do something similar. Uh, but for what we, uh, there are two things about the competitors. First of all, the stage that we are. I don't think none of them. Uh, was able to to think to the legal model, legal framework that we are thinking. Actually, they are not going as fast as as we think they could be, especially on national on national territory. Maybe they are strong in some areas, Spain, etc. So, uh, second, if you look to the business plan, we are not aiming to get 100% of the market. So, the more humble version of the business plan, if we get 5% of the market, we are still profitable. So. Competition is good from our point of view. Okay. Obviously, there are uh, more ambitious business plan uh, calculated, and um, and, the, and the and the third, I would say, the vision. I don't know what is the vision of this, of this company, uh, but we have several uh, <coughs> way to grow, and I don't think, I, I don't not sure that they are going the same direction, especially mm -hmm. thinking about the collaboration with real estate agents. We are very close with the with the real estate agents. And we are not uh, thinking that this will become like super digital tomorrow. So we think there will be a transition time. And this is, you know, typical people say, ah, real estate will disappear, uh, everything will, will be done digital. I think we are paying extremely attention to provide tools to real estate agents. One example, for instance, our, our, our uh, uh, product, the digital product, as a, a chatbot, and the real estate agent can, for instance, sign the visit sheet when they pay the visit. He can pay, sign the, the reservation contract. He can pay, he has a, a, like a, a contestable payment feature for paying the reserve. And this stuff, are we all done because we're listening to real estate agents. So I, I think this could be a different approach. I don't, I don't say that they cannot catch up and do similar stuff, but I think we are having a similar different. Yeah, uh, how, however, uh you boss, Rimbo, and you are competing in the same country at the moment, yeah. and in the same space. <coughs> and uh, as far as I know, Rimbo is like a couple of years ahead of yeah. you. Yeah. So I would like to understand better mm -hmm. how, how, what is the difference that you are proposing against Rimbo. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned before uh, yeah. the legal framework, for example. Can you uh, explain that uh, better? Yeah. Uh, so. 
Yeah, actually, I want to show you. I feel there's another company which is doing something similar. Uh, it's called Avalisto. I don't know if you heard about them. And, and I think they're directly competing with Rainbow, the same model. So the, the legal. I don't know what this is like, but, but, but the, the reason is that uh, basically we are providing um, we are providing ourselves now with the new change of the legal framework. We are providing our self protection to the to the to the lenders. What we are selling at the moment, either directly or through real estate agents, we are telling use our platform to validate the, the customer. Okay, and we if we say that this uh, this tenant is okay. It's like you are buying a product and we are showing the quality of the product. If you are happy with the quality of the product, I will cover you for damages and missing payment. So we are actually not selling the insurance or the coverage itself. We are selling a tech product that is able to guarantee the quality of the product, which, which in this case the product is the tenant. Okay. And then we have insurance company on the back. They are giving us a coverage called in Spain. I don't know, sorry, the, the English term. It's a perdida pecuniarias. Like, okay, I am losing all my capital for, for the protection, and the insurance company protected me because I'm losing capital because I made a mistake. So it's not purely selling the coverage from another company and insurance. We're just not a, a digital insurance company. So this, for instance, is something that we, we made different. We are done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm actually sorry to announce that I'll be the first one to present in Spanish. That's all right. Okay. It's okay. Because I brought everything in Spanish, so I'll present in Spanish. It's really no problem. Uh, because I read in the email, you said like, that's all right, you can actually make it in Spanish, and you don't have time, so I send I send it back in Spanish. So it could, be, it could be actually complicated to read. Or maybe present at the same time with the document in Spanish and then make it in English. I do so feel for but many of the investors, uh, they don't speak Spanish, so okay. it's up to you. And well, at some point you can, you can translate. Yeah, I can actually answer all the questions or whatever you want in English, but I'll try to present in Spanish just to make it at the same time, you know, right? One moment, here you have for oh, the presentation. Right. Okay, how does it work? Go up and, and down. And here. Uh, the here? Same. 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 Baja. Bajo. Sí. Vale. Aquí y después para arriba, ¿no? Sí. Comenzamos ya. Buenos días, mi nombre es Ricardo Canal, soy cofundador de SUP, el software de captación de clientes para instaladores de paneles solares fotovoltaicos. ¿Y por qué estoy aquí? Estoy aquí porque quiero que vosotros forméis parte de mi misión. Queremos ser el software especializado en la captación y trazabilidad de clientes para instaladores de paneles solares fotovoltaicos número uno en España, posteriormente a nivel europeo y uno de los referentes a nivel global. ¿Y cómo lo vamos a hacer? Principalmente vamos a atacar estos siguientes problemas. Por un lado, tenemos los problemas para las ingenierías instaladoras, empresas muy poco digitalizadas. No solo eso, sino que uno de sus mayores costes de estructura es el coste de captación y para que os hagáis una idea, gasta muchísimo dinero y su ratio de conversión aproximado está sobre el 1%. Por otro lado, os hablo de lo que sería responsable del espacio, o llamemos a partir de ahora sociedad. Existe una actual dificultad en la búsqueda de ofertas por parte del propietario del inmueble y además hay pocos incentivos para valorar el uso de realizar una instalación solar fotovoltaica. Entonces, ¿cómo venimos a hacerlo? ¿Qué somos y hacia dónde nos dirigimos? Por un lado, SUF es la plataforma que conecta a propietarios interesados en recibir distintas ofertas acompañadas de distintas alternativas de financiación, como podría ser un contrato PPA, una financiación pública, o sea, una subvención, financiación privada en Renting, Unising, etc., con empresas especializadas del sector que están dispuestas a desarrollar y financiar proyectos. Entonces, aquí solo decir una frase en verde, para que os hagáis un poco la idea de cuál es nuestro producto a día de hoy, es que somos el idealista de los espacios renovables. Pero ¿hacia dónde nos dirigimos? Nos dirigimos en convertir dicha plataforma en un software CRM para las ingenierías. De esta forma, a nosotros tenemos la oportunidad de aportar más valor a dichas empresas, aportar nuevas funcionalidades, y no solo eso, sino que vamos a permitir a estas empresas a poder digitalizar todos sus áreas de ventas. Además, nos permitirá a SUF incorporar una nueva fuente de ingresos mediante un modelo de revenue recurrente. Entonces, nosotros los dos, los dos socios empezamos en septiembre, full time, y hasta entonces hemos conseguido trabajar ya con unas 15 ingenierías las cuales están dispuestas a recibir distintas propuestas por nuestra parte. Tenemos un ticket medio por ingeniería por lead, porque vendemos cada lead a tres ingenierías, 
de 181 ingresos, de 181 euros. Tenemos dos mentores, eh, uno de ellos con experiencia en la captación de inmuebles, que es Marc Pilar de Bartul, y el otro de ellos, Ramón Morera, eh, CEO y fundador de Nesis, con experiencia en energía renovable. Por otro lado, tenemos un tiempo operativo interno de marcación del BID con, un, con, con, con una tecnología propia, que lo que hacemos es para el BID a partir de 5 variables de unos 19 minutos. Y en, en septiembre captamos, aquí dice 18 espacios, pero a día de hoy estamos sobre los 21. En septiembre captamos, hicimos un por 4 lo que teníamos puesto en el estimated BP. La verdad es que ahora en octubre vamos aún encima de lo que teníamos planeado. Y no solo eso, sino que ya disponemos de unos cuantos preacuerdos los cuales queremos aceptar una vez tengamos inyección de capital para entonces nosotros poder acelerar la operativa de la compañía. Modelo de negocio a día de hoy, muy sencillo. Nosotros lo que hacemos es permitir a cualquier propietario de un inmueble publicar de forma totalmente gratuita en nuestra plataforma. Entonces, a posterior, nosotros lo que hacemos es valorar ese BID con esas cinco variables y se le asigna automáticamente, de forma totalmente objetiva, una tarifa que va de 50 a 200 euros. Entonces, lo que hacemos es vender ese BID a tres ingenierías, ¿de acuerdo? Obviamente, como podéis ver aquí, nosotros lo que queremos es tener la referencia mensual de software, que es lo que estamos desarrollando a día de hoy. Pero bueno, ¿en qué mercado nos, nos encontramos? Nos encontramos en uno de los mercados que es, está más J a día de hoy, ¿no? Al final está muy en auge. Entonces, para que os hagáis una idea, según el INE y el IDESCAD, en España hay al, más o menos unos 11 millones de inmuebles susceptibles de realizar una instalación solar fotovoltaica. Teniendo en consideración el tipo de inmueble que hemos estado captando y vendiendo, con el precio medio que hemos estado vendiendo, y que lo vendemos en tres ingenierías, nos sale un potencial market value en España de los 2.620 millones de euros. El equipo pasó brevemente por encima. A día de hoy somos los dos cofundadores. Después tenemos a Ramón y Morera, a Ramón Morera y, y Mar Pilar, que son los, los emprendedores que sí que forman parte del accionario de la compañía. Además, estamos en búsqueda activa de un CTO y no solo eso, sino ya hemos incorporado nuestro primer recambio para que sea que se encargue de la captación de Goldtones. ¿De acuerdo? Ahí he puesto un poco de experiencia, pues si después necesitamos volver a esa posición. Como proyecciones, os diré dos puntos principales. Sobre Estimated TV tenemos una equidad positiva a partir de abril 2022 y no solo eso, sino que tenemos un rango actual con la hipótesis de tener cero ingresos por parte de la compañía, cosa que no es real porque ya los tenemos. Pero bueno, con la inyección de capital de 200.000 euros más el ENISA, jóvenes emprendedores que ya estamos gestionando con Nova Comune, de hasta octubre de 2022. Entonces, así rápidamente, son cuatro puntos principales, ¿de acuerdo? Que es que por un lado tenemos la incorporación, eh, como patching de la ronda, tenemos la incorporación del CTO en cuanto tengamos inyección de capital. Más adelante, cara a febrero de 2022, nos gustaría incorporar a la de analista de marketing. Y a finales de año tenemos lo que sería la incorporación de Ikea con Manager, tanto para propietarios como para ingenierías. Entonces, ahí nos sale 256.000 de budget, que por lo que veo no se ve muy bien. Pero como información de ronda y es la última diapo, ahora mismo tenemos una necesidad financiera aproximada de unos 200.000 euros, haciendo una valoración pre de un millón, post money un millón doscientos, ¿de acuerdo? Y con un porcentaje de equity cedido a los inversores del 16,6%. Gracias. 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 Well, I, I wanted to, to know um, two main things. Mm -hmm. uh, first one is, uh, which is the difference between you and Adultissimo, for example, right. because, because you, are, you, you sure. have kind of the same business so mm -hmm. model, so I wanted to know the difference. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing is totally different that I tell you now, and, and you, can, you can answer it later. Is, uh, Spain looks like it's a good place to, to sell this Maybe. product because of the, yeah. the geographical <laughs> situation and everything. How can you in, uh, go, go abroad? All right. Go international. So I answer the second question and then I go to the, to yeah. the first one. To start with, uh, all Europe, we've got an objective which is actually uh, the climate change in 2050. So it means most of Europe has to make a change, respect it, respectively with, the, with what's actually the PV system sort for, for our consumption, all right? Mm -hmm. Which means there's no problem and we can actually increase in different countries. Not only these, but also, but also as you can see here, we're already. We are already planning what's actually a second round of investment, 750,000 euros, first to consolidate the market in Spain and then move, move over to what's Germany and stuff like that. Then you actually ask me, like, how could, I, how could I, make, I make it to other countries? It's kind of funny, but in Spain we're actually the third country with more sun, so it's actually a big country, but even Germany has more, more solar panels than us, which means actually different countries in Europe are actually using this kind of system. And to the first question. We're actually working with a lot of engineering companies, which they told us already, that they're not happy, happy with Abitissimo. Why? Because Abitissimo is not a specialized platform for lead generator for solar, so, uh, solar installations, right? So, a lot of, a lot of these things, uh, like a lot of clients which are actually coming from Abitissimo, engineers are not happy because are poor, they, they've got poor quality. They are only paying like 17 or, or, or 13 euros, <laughs> and the quality of those leads are never converting to some clients. Because there are clients which are actually in Abitissimo because they want to make some kind of a change in their house, and then they can, they can see they can receive like for free different proposals from different companies, and then they're applying without even knowing if they really want to make a solar panel. 
So most of the co most of the companies in which we're working from, they already try the Altissimo, but as they are not actually guaranteeing what it would be a a, a quality of the a quality of the a quality of the lead, they're stopping working with them. As I mentioned before, uh, we're actually um, validating every single lead, taking into consideration five variables, right? So we are uh, trying to guarantee to the different companies that our quality of the lead it's 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 it's, it's a very good quality, which means it's going to try to increase their conversion rate, no? So those those five variables is something that we only did. We only we're the only ones making it. Abitissimo doesn't, and we're actually taking into consideration what's the consumption consumption of electricity of the of the, of the lead. Not only this, but also the average price of the lead, right? So the average price of the electricity consumption of the lead, the, pot the potential of meter square of yeah meter squares in which the installation can be done in the property. Then we're actually making the location and also the orientation. Why? So of course it's not the same to have a house here, or maybe not a house, but maybe a industrial warehouse or whatsoever here in Barcelona in the sieges because the solar radiation is completely different. And therefore we've got this kind of like, uh, with this kind of uh, model that actually validates every single lead and therefore our quality it's, it's, it's way higher. And that's the reason why pay, they are paying more than an Abitissimo and that's the reason why they're actually mm -hmm. working with us. Mm -hmm. so how, what is your, your lead generation strategy? You're selling leads to the engineering companies. Yeah. So how are you getting actually the services that you want to sell to them? Sure. Right now, we're actually focusing on, of course, the online channel and the offline channel, right? We started the online channel just like a week ago because we had our first revenue. We got like 915 euros of revenue, so that's the reason why we actually started investing with it. But if I should actually tell you what's our comp, like our current customer decision cost or how we're actually making it, we're actually making it completely off offline, right? So we're instead of going um, lead per lead or make, making cold, uh, cold calls, we're actually presenting in different places. So just for example, Cabaret Comercio. We present into them because there's a lot of companies which they are interested in us, and we've got already partnerships. Wait, I present you here. We've already we've got already partnerships, such as for example with Espinosa, which we're, we are already working, and they've got 300 um, buildings in Barcelona. They were well, they are actually administrating those 300 buildings, and as I'm sure you're aware, in Spain there's only one percent of buildings are they've got a a. A, an energy efficiency, efficiency grade A or B, the 99% rest is actually brown, like it's so good. And therefore, these kind of companies, which they are actually uh, handling a lot of properties, we're working directly with them. So they can be the one who's actually uh, uploading not only one property, as it would be even trying to convince you, they can actually upload those 300 properties. So we're actually trying to go to what's like a B2B kind of like conversation and negotiation. So, yeah. Sorry, the about the CTO, you, you said you don't have a CTO right no, now. No, we've already talked to three CTOs. Okay, we talked to three CTOs, but it's waiting on basically. Yeah, because we're gonna we're gonna do a thing that is called vesting. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give them a salary, which is actually the cost here already. Like the companies, that cost, that cost here, it's already it, the cost which is a uh, like the company's cost, right? Taking into consideration taxes and stuff like that. So we already uh, talked to those guys, in which we're gonna give them a salary that is around like 25, 26 thousand euros per year. Mm -hmm. Which is a company cost for a like sixteenth month of our budget of thirty seven five hundred, all right? And we already talked to them, and we're waiting for the, for the investment round to come to come to the company, so we can actually put them with salary and give them and what's a total of between three and four percent of vesting of actions mm -hmm. of what shares, sorry, of actions of shares <coughs> with investing. So we are actually sure he's going to stay for like at least four years because every day he's going to be you know like winning one or something. Like this. And have you worked with? one of those three candidates already I'm in a small project or I mean CTO is a major position yeah for you. this I mean this is this is probably your most riskiest hire I know okay. I know so for example our website, our website our website right now I've created by my own and I didn't study engineering or whatsoever but I actually created by my own I spent a lot of hours so now it works and when we already talked to them they're actually really really interested because the project is a project which is pretty big <laughs> and and well, it can actually be really scalable. And talking to them, we're actually talking with a guy who's been being a developer in Global for like six years. We have to decide on the second. So I think you have the answer. Well, and, and if you I think it's an uh, important question. We have like sure. Sure. and I want that your first and answer, please. How long have you been grazing this 200k? Mm -hmm. How much have you closed so far? We didn't close anything. We've got a committee for you know energy now on the eleventh. Uh, look and play. They wanna, they wanna, they wanna invest with us, but they're they're only acting as a follower, right? Mm -hmm. Then we've got Pira Ventures, which actually from this from the ex CEO of Jastel and and Eolia. Then we're actually also talk, talking to any partners, right? Which are actually partners related to what's um what's uh, renewable energy. Okay. Since how so long? Since how long? When did uh, you start? Half September. 
we actually had a different valuation. We had a valuation of 1.25 million, right, instead of 1 million, but we had to accelerate the round because otherwise it would actually take like seven months. Because we've been principally accepted, they told us that we are already in, like if everything goes wrong, if everything goes good, then there's no problem. And we're going to Lanzadera on, on January 2022. So we really want to get all the money so we can actually try to close the market, you know, like to break it and go hard. Perfect. That's all. Adelante. That's me. Anyway, our mobile, I, our um, business model is a B2B subscription model within a monthly fixed plus a budget per campaign. It is a business model tested, validated, and optimized for a 500 million obtainable market. I don't know why this code. Okay, I don't know. We have here. Of course, we have to think about other tech and AI market research companies as competitors, but as you can see in this chart over here, Feeder is the only solution in the market that can offer qualitative analytics through video instant reactions without any hardware needed at a much lower price. And for and because of all of this, we are facing a 3,000 forecast, a customer's forecast to get to earn more than 1.5 million revenue. And once we have our SDK developed, we will be able to get international and scale. And this is a strategy that we intend to maximize over the next years within the next rounds. Actually, we're currently in our, in our pre-seed round, raising 200,000 euros. So we're about to finish, but first, let me introduce you. Uh, who's behind Feeder? We're a highly skilled team of friends and professionals with over 30 years of experience in business development and marketing, fully committed and aiming to do something really, really big here. And lastly, I also want you to meet our amazing board of advisors. We have three incredible marketing directors with a huge experience and their team 
the ex uh, general manager at Microsoft, ex director at AWS, among other incredible jobs. So that's it. I hope you found Peter as exciting as we do, and you want to know more about us. Thank you very much. I'd like to understand who is your customer. Is that the Coca-Cola? Yes. Is that the advertising agency? Is that the digital agency? Who are you actually selling to? We are actually selling to marketing agencies, marketing professionals, content creators, anyone that would, uh, would find uh, a need on testing their contents, on analyzing their audiences, and understanding their audiences. So they will it sell is a market research tool. Yeah. So they will sell services based on your community to their customers. Yes. Yes. Them. Actually, they're yeah, they are selling the. <coughs> Do you have uh, so the the base of uh, the market base among the research will be done? Do you collect it? Do you, do you collect it? Every time that your customer needs a research, or you have a pre-existing base? No, uh, we have uh, the tool is, is created for uh, it, for our clients bring their our clients are bringing their audiences. I mean, it is because I, I, I I've been working my own audiences for many years, and just thinking about creating a new audience, uh, it, it, it didn't make any sense for me. So what we have created is a button for for putting a code. So anyone can send to their audience uh, newsletter, Facebook ads, whatever. Right. Use this code on feeder to get a discount on blah blah blah. So you can get an analysis of your audience, of your own audience. And of course, uh, it is much better for us in terms of strategy. Doesn't have to. We don't need to to have a B two C strategy. Um, can you tell us about the market size? Yes. And yeah. and about your uh, fundraising round. Well. Yes. So uh, yeah, as, as I as I told, maybe a little, a little quick. Uh, we are now in a in a 500 million obtainable market, which would be uh, the market research uh, market in Spain. So the then the market in Europe, the market research uh, com um, companies spent uh, in Europe is over 40 million, 40 billion uh, dollars, and the TAM, I mean the, the total market would be over 70 billion. Uh, Dollars. It is huge. I mean, um, and it's mainly because market research, as I told you at the beginning, it is incredibly expensive. I mean, I haven't had uh, the, the, the time or the money for for being able to, to do a market research. So people really spend a lot of money on this. So it is a market where there is a lot of money, but there is also a huge opportunity among all other companies that aren't able to to afford the market research. Mm -hmm. And there was another. Yeah, sorry, about, about the, the round. The about the round, yeah. Uh, we're in the pre seed round, raising 200,000 euros um, with a pre money valuation of 900,000 euros. And the idea is uh, basically our, our goal is uh, with this round is creating a, a team for developing the API, the SDK, for, for scaling the model and not just being on a, on a mobile app. But being on any digital environment possible. Do you have something committed? Uh, not committed yet, but uh, we have uh, something very, very advanced. I mean, we're close to, to start committing things. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Why, uh, why cheaper? Uh, since your technology is superior, why do you have to be cheaper? Um, because it, it is one of our biggest uh, value value propositions against our competitors because we can afford it. Being being so cheap, we can scale and scale and scale and scale. And we have, with these prices, we have more than 97% of, of margin. So we believe that, which we truly really believe at, at this at this sentence I, I told uh, during, the, during the pitch about democratizing your marketing. This is something that a client of ours said She's a neuromarketer, a neuromarketer herself, and she was like, you're democratizing neuromarketing here because it is something actually really expensive, but it is not that hard to achieve without a good technology. And I mean, we have a lot of margin for, for using these prices. Thank you.
I am interested in, in the legal and the psychological uh, aspects <coughs> of uh, being willing uh, faces. Yes. For example, that's one question. Mm -hmm. And another question is uh, how uh, your customer will incentivate their audiences to okay. be able to be okay. recorded. Yeah. Uh, about legal, yeah, I mean, it's, it is one of the first things, the first concerns we had. And we, of course, we took care of everything because it is so, so uh, important that I don't, I mean, it, uh, everything is more than, than took care of. And basically, that, this is why we have a mobile app. The mobile app gives us all the legal, all the legal um, matters um, for, for basically all users that enter in the, in the application. They accept all terms and conditions and everything. So they know they, they are part of a market research. And, uh, and the second question was how users enter on the app. Uh, you, you must think about this as a focus group. I don't remember you, if you have participated uh, some, some day in one. Basically, there's a brand, an agency, or someone that tells you, come here, come to this, participate in this study, in this study, and, uh, and you will give this reward. So basically, what uh, our clients are offering in exchange of, of the analysis is for example, a percentage, a percentage of discount, whatever, some, some kind of, of offer, reward. Thank you. Dan un momento para hacer cambio de. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Thanks for being here. Um, I'm David Mateo, the, uh, the co-founder at uh, Big Data Cicerone. Um, we are a business intelligence tool uh, working in the travel industry and more focused in the tourism activities sector. It is a sector that is worth now, after the pandemic, uh, $159 trillion. Uh, dollars. Um, my team... Yeah. Is it working? Here. Go up. I will right. pass for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So my team is Jordi, Joan, and Ricardo. Um, in fact, uh, Jordi, our CEO, is currently busy at Lanzadera here in, in Valencia. We've been selected out of 1,000 companies. Um, so together with another 96 colleagues, we are fighting to get our way. Um, we, the four of us, combine a strong background in, uh, in um, business, not only management, but a software engineer, um, cloud computing, but more important, the travel industry. <laughs> All right, it's going to be challenging. Yes. Um, yeah, so our purpose is to, to focus on helping companies, helping small and medium uh, enterprises, but also OTAs, online travel agencies, in to get their way to uh, digitize uh, their business. May I just add to the clip in there? Do you guys mind if I... So yeah, uh, we help digitize uh, tourism activities. Um, this, this sector is quite unprofessional in that sense. I'm not talking about uh, big, big banners or like big clients like could be, um, uh, for example, get your guide if you know uh, the industry. Our target, in fact, are three main uh, uh, clients, local tour operators. So those are the ones that have only one city. They operate in one destination. And those are about one million all over the world. We have multinational tour operators. Those are in more than 10 cities, 10 destinations. They are about one, 100,000 all over the world. And then, last but not least, we have online travel agencies that are TripAdvisor, um, uh, Get Your Guide, Civitatis, and all of those that work everywhere in the world. There are 150 players, and they share the same problem. They have lack of data uh, to benchmark, uh, that sometimes they take bad decisions out of intuition, and um, they lack of a specialized software for the industry. 
there are many other many other business intelligence tools like uh, Tableau or Power BI, but they are not specialized in exactly uh, what we do. So for local tour operators, they do have a bunch of data. They have emails, telephone numbers, uh, nationalities, and so on, but they do nothing with it. They are too busy with the daily operation. Multinational tour operators, they do have data, they sort it, they analyze it, but that's it. Um, there is no time for them to also revamp and create a sort of uh, interaction with that data to present new projects to improve the customer experience. And online travel agencies, indeed, they do have more resources, therefore they end up explaining a story, but it's just in some occasions. Not all of them are equipped and have the budget to uh, use the data for something uh, better. So our solution basically is to create a benchmark solution where all the data is going to be centralized in our database. That data is going to be completely anonymous. So all the travelers, passengers that are visiting every single tour of, of our clients are going to be shared between the rest of them. So they will be able to know their buyer persona, how many nationalities they have, and so on. May I have another 30 seconds? Yes. Um, so we, we aim to provide a benchmark, scalability, and also optimize their, their operations. We are a SaaS platform, um, and we aim to provide business intelligence as well as artificial intelligence to provide a better forecasting because it's well needed in the industry. So our focus is to get to 2,000 out of these 1 million uh, local tour operators, 100 out of these um, 100,000 um, multinational uh, tour operators, and just 10 out of these 150 OTAs. The idea is to offer uh, software that comes from 59 uh, euros and above, and the total market that we aim to achieve in this, uh, sorry, the revenue that we aim to achieve in the next uh, two years is 3 million euros. Why now? It's super important um, to combining the efforts with the European Union to help digitize the, the, the businesses. Yeah, finish. Sorry. Anterior. Anterior. Yes, yeah. Esto? Gracias. Apologies for the Yeah, I think that it's, uh, it's important to consider that our key uh, value is the data. So it's important to go to the operator, the tour operators, gather that data, store it in our database, and then use it. Because if we don't have that data, it's very weird that all my tour agencies are going to, to choose us uh, as a solution. So our value is to gather that data for all, all the tour operators, and then eventually be able to to serve as a benchmark tool. The country then segmented into one country or one kind of type of tourism. I don't know. Well, I'm not in the tourism industry, yet, but yeah, I can imagine there is segmentation. There. So to to give you an idea, um, tours and activities. We can have tours as of walking tours, then you go to bike tours, something a bit more complex, VIT, VIP tours and so on. And then when it comes to activities with museums and all the rest. Uh, we plan to focus first on the tours industry, so it means bike tours, uh, walking tours and so on, because we identify that especially uh, local tour operators are not very professional and are not keen to do that technological transition. So for us to go with a little ticket is going to start bringing traction and create that database that is going to help us to, to go to, to the OTAs in the end. Uh, from you too, uh, there is someone asking about uh, your metrics uh -huh. from today. 
Do you have any metrics? Metrics in terms of revenue, for example. Well, we have um, now compromised 2,000 euros revenue from, from clients. So it means that uh, as of the contracts that we signed, uh, because it, is a, it has been a bespoke solution that we've done for Sandman Europe Tours and uh, other players like Amigo Tours, it has been already 24,000 signed for the rest of the year. So that is something quite interesting, but we are not now in the, in the position to say that our metrics are key or to identify you know, a, a potential KPI that will bring us you know, the joy to say, well, we are there. Um, but so far, <clears throat> all the interviews we've done, the pitching we have done, and the, the selling of the product has been very successful, <coughs> especially with multinational and local tour operators. You are part time? Yes. Actually, as I mentioned, this speech should be given by, by my partner, Jordi. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm helping him with everything related to market research. Uh, not so much in product because he's not my background, <coughs> but market and uh, everything related with strategy. But you are a founder? Yeah. Founder. <coughs> yeah, I mean, hopefully one day if we uh, actually leverage our expertise and so on and we get the 250K that we need, we can start dedicating more resources and of course my time. And how long have you been raising money? Um, we in fact started like six months ago, but we've been focusing on the product development. Uh, the product was um, basically, I mean, it was a product that was helpful for the, for the tourism industry, but it wasn't a touchdown. It wasn't something that we could feel comfortable going to an OTA and saying, hey, we have this, can you help us leverage our assets and, and go to the market and get more data? Um, what we've done is to start with a benchmark solution, but we realize that we have this resistance from the key players saying, well, why am I gonna give you my data? Uh, there's no sense. I'm gonna give you my data, my competitor is going to see it. By going through the strategy of offering a business intelligence, that changed the entire scenario because they could see their data, they could match the buyer persona with the product, they understood the potential of that and they would not mind you to provide that anonymous data for us to then serve to uh, bigger players. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we've been focused in products and now we are starting doing the, the research. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tienes que apuntar al ordenador. Baja. Sube. Sorry, just testing. <laughs> I've seen there's been some problems, so I just want to make sure that it works. We have one minute extra. You can go there. Yeah, okay. So now, IT, IT testing. Okay, good. Wait, okay. Let's go. Okay, so, well, thank you very much for this, uh, for this chance. So, we are Toast, and I'm gonna explain you about our project. So now think about employees' time and the money are the key resources of every single organization globally, right? So now imagine that they could have a digital brand that reduces time, that reduces costs, and helps them to be more efficient in order to stay innovative and competitive in the market. Well, we created the Toast Digital Brain that is powering mid-market enterprises to automate all processes within their organizations. And our objective is to be the leader in AI and automation for the mid-market. But there's a lot to improve in an organization. Actually, if you think about all these companies that they are processing large amount of incoming invoices, they typically suffer from human errors, time delays, and inefficiencies while processing their data. And this is because for two main reasons. One is that they are using obsolete solutions, and the other one is that they, do it. they are doing it manually. If they do it manually, they lose around 110,000 euros annually. But luckily, we've got a solution, which is the Dose Digital Brain, and that is a SaaS to automate the process of incoming supplier invoices. 
to help the CFOs in mid-sized companies to improve efficiency, to reduce time, to eliminate the human error, and to reduce the cost up to 75% by using our AI. We compete in a global market where, according to Gartner, the intelligent process automation and AI here in Europe and for finance and accounting is seen as an $8.4 billion opportunity just this year, 2021. We obviously have some, um, some competitors, and we are similar to companies like Rossum and Verify from a document AI processing standpoint, but there are other emerging vendors in automation like Levity and Deep Opinion. But we are going to differentiate ourselves by creating the, those digital brains that will allow companies to build automation like they build PowerPoint presentations. Plus, we have a very complementary team with relevant industry experience, international experience, and what's best that we have been already been working together as a team. Plus, a world-class board. And here in the team, we have our CTO, Nakaja Basi, who is uh, an expert in AI, and previously the global AI leader at data. We have uh, Fernando Martin, who is here with us, our CRO, a killer, a killer in sales, and previously the EMEA sales executive for AI at data. And myself, Adam Barbera, as a CEO, and previously the EMEA Strategic Alliance Manager at Tech Data. And we are eager to make those the next European unicorn. Last July, we raised 40,000 euros, and we launched our MVP, and quickly we have got traction from 10 POC customers, six paying customers, and this just with a beta version. We were also invited to join the Microsoft for the Startups program, where when we graduate, we're going to be part of the global Microsoft Salesforce portfolio. And additionally, we have now more than one, uh, 150,000 euros in our pipeline. This just within three months. And imagine what we, can, what we could achieve with a complete SaaS product and a growth team. That is why now we are looking for 400,000 euros because we want to accelerate exponentially our growth. We want to accelerate our development of the Toast Digital Brain platform, sign 200 customers, achieve 450,000 euros of annual recurring revenue, and get to the next milestone with our team, get to the next funding round, and start the Toast International Expansion. Thank you. Customers already, but you have like a still an early version of the product. Why are these customers already working with you? Why, why is there so much traction? Thank you. Well, uh, let me highlight some figures on this because uh, previously we, we have been exploring a lot the, the market and testing and testing our solution previously to, to launch and develop a, a, a final, let's say, final version that, that we already have. And uh, let's say that uh, from 100 clients, up to 80% are conscious of they need automation in, this, in these processes. Up to 60% more or less would like to test our solution. And now our main problem is that no more than 10% already have budget for this year. But some of them are trying to, to get budget to test our solution for the, for the next one. So we, we can say, and we are very proud uh, to say that almost the half of the doors that we are knocking, they are open uh, the door for us. Um, why aren't um, the existing accountancy packages in computers as a module themselves? Why it just seems like natural for an accounting system to include this of their own? Why haven't they actually go to why why are why are they not recognizing the opportunity? Well, that's uh, that, that's that's a good question, and um, I'm gonna repeat it for the audience. So, why does the accounting software are not including a solution like ours, right? So, it is it is simple because it's not their core business, and they typically have mm -hmm. some of them they have like a similar feature, but it's not working properly. And the truth is that. 
we have customers that they are coming to us saying, well, we have some kind of solution which is not working and we are not using. So you are showing us something different and we would like to test it and use it. Did you uh, build your own algorithms or are you using something like Google or, or Amazon? Yeah, it's a combination of open source technology and Microsoft Cognitive Services. And of the existing customers, I mean, is, can you already see a kind of segmentation, certain customers that you could cluster and, and where you say, hey, probably your market is there. And not, because going broad is going to kill you. I mean, yeah. if you go very broad, it will be very hard to scale. So is there kind of an indication already? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's uh, I mean, you know, I am speaking with, with clients every day. So, uh, we we already have the tech that we have uh, more success in in, in some uh, in some let's say verticals mm -hmm. industries, and uh, and this is good for us because we are developing a specialization in our digital brains uh, in some of them. So it's true that. Uh, we, uh, when, when we are knocking the door, as I am saying, all uh, open the, the door to us. But it's true that uh, it's easier for some uh, some industries like uh, manufacturing, for example. And what we have seen that is that in the franchise market, mm -hmm. we we can get a lot of access because they uh, they are very inefficient in the in the processes. So we yeah, have both. Yeah, they, they have they have a lot of paper, a lot of invoices, a lot of uh, documents that they need to process, and nobody is doing at the end of the day because they have uh, very limited res resources. So uh, we we can see that in these both uh, worlds, uh, our solution is is being very good, and this means uh, that for us uh, allowed us to be more perfect because uh, once uh, we are uh, putting facing our solution against uh, different invoices from different sector more and more it is learning more and more day by day, so it's becoming more efficient. Just let me add one thing. So basically, our sweet spot, sweet spot is mid-market, those, you know, uh, not, not too big, not, not too small companies, and specifically in construction, manufacturing, uh, healthcare, and also outsourcing services. How are you going to scale? Uh, which is your, your strategy, your global strategy of growth? Well, uh, first of all, we, we are developing uh, a SaaS product, which is the way we're going to scale quickly. And we have three main lines of uh, growing and going to market. So one is self-service, all it's going to be online, right? So we're going to have like um, a full SaaS experience that is going to be, be set up in minutes. Then with the bigger accounts that they need specific requirements, specific integrations, we're going to go more like direct. This typically takes a little bit longer, so we know that this is more like a sales and a one-to-one -one kind of uh, sales process. And then we are also, because we come from the channel, we are also building the channel. So we know the channel is key, and we are also uh, uh, getting into agreements with distribution companies, software distribution companies, um, implementation partners, and technology partners. Here, coming back to your, to your question, we are already exploring these partnerships with ERPs to get into their marketplace. So all their customers, they can acquire our, our solution through their, through their marketplace and expanding our, our reach and scaling quickly. What's the difference between you and your iPad? We are better. It's a different Long story short, um, even, even though that UiPath is just 10 years old and it just went IPO now, they are already the, the old wave of automation and we are the new wave of automation. Mm -hmm. Let's say that uh, with, with, you, uh, with you, uh, UiPath uh, you have all the, all the tools and then you have to build a house. We are just building different houses depending on the on the person and you are doing by yourself because we have training models with the real path uh, they have first build the model and after that automate and uh, improve it uh, with training 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 and now that we have access to several clients uh, we can train much faster than building a specific uh, model so in in this way 
we are both is a good company, very good product, but uh, I think that the focus of the of the market is, is totally opposite. We are done. seen people struggle with this. This made me remember of my brother gave me a joystick to play PlayStation Wait. with a single player game. Go up. Down. Down. Okay. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Happy to be here. Um, well, a little bit about ourselves. I'm Fernando. I'm one of the co-founders and Ricky is, is the other one. Um, we met at Globo. Um, and they started off at Globo when they were about 30 people, and I started when they were uh, about 200. And we, we started off being us two and, and an intern, and we, we built a team of almost 40 people, uh, a global team of, of UX. So the, the thing we have in common with the thing is we, we, we love to have an impact and have a positive impact on society. It's, so that's the reason we, we ended up building Vermont. So, Bermud. Bermud is, is uh, focused on seniors. It's a silver economy um, startup. Uh, if you don't know what silver economy is, it's basically um, a startup fo focused on people that is above 55 years old. And, and why, why are we focusing on this? Our parents just, just retired, and we can see the struggle in the unattended um, demographic we, we have here. And of course, it, it's only going to grow. I, you can see clearly our pyramid is, is aging. Uh, we, we, the life expectancy has never been uh, as big as it is today. Um, in 10 years from now, people above 65 is going to be more than people under 25. And this with the same average retirement age. Uh, people re here in Spain, that's in Europe. In Spain, people retire average 60 years old. And dependency physically or mentally starts at 80. So we're talking about 20 years gap in between um, retirement and dependency in which we're not offering anything to seniors. Um, basically, we have an unattended segment. We have people that is aging well with uh, vitality, energy, that is retiring young with money, and that are digitized. They're not native, but they're digitized. And, and, and the products and services are still being built for young people, and the reality is uh, we're treating our seniors like we used to in the 70s, and, and this has changed. And I know this for a fact that that's my dad. He's 64. <laughs> he retired uh, two years ago. Uh, he was a beast in his professional life. And now I, I'm, I'm Argentinian, by the way. He moved to Malala uh, just because of the thrill of it, because he has nothing to do. He wants to do things, he's looking for things, but there's not a place to be for seniors, actually. So. This is, where, this is where the solution comes. Basically, we're a communi community marketplace. What is, uh, why we're a community marketplace is because we create activities and experiences uh, taking into account the pains of a senior. We build a, a pyramid of needs. Basically, it's like a Maslow pyramid in which we take into account uh, in the base the, the, the social connections they need. So people that is, is in loneliness, and then we go up. Basically, we have in the middle um, the, the, the passions and the things people actually uh, want to deepen in after retirement. And then in the top of the pyramid, you have volunteers, charity, sharing, and actually they're leading their own experiences inside our mood. So the whole goal in the community part comes because they get to bond inside the platform. So we have a vertical social network within the app. So basically, well, what we have is the demand part. So there are the seniors and the supply part that are um, professional small businesses in which they have no clue how to get to this uh, segment. And we give them the, the ability to do that. And then we know the visibility we're giving uh, some uh, civil economy companies is going to make a uh, uh, super attractive for B2B2C agreements insurance companies, well, we, we actually have the first one with a Vermouth uh, brand that is Perucci. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, 30 seconds. So, our, our traction, we founded Vermouth in July 2020. For now, we've made uh, last quarter more than 1,600 uh, bookings. 
uh, last quarter we had a GMP of 11,000 uh, uh, 11, uh, and basically our, our NPS is huge and, and we have a really good market fit of the product and we're, we're catching attention. Our growth uh, month by month is uh, about 30% and uh, we already have more than 2,000 sign up customers now we're launching the app today actually. Um, we have an amazing team. Uh, Biras is back in India. After this round, we're planning to bring in him uh, here to Barcelona. And this is around basically. Uh, we're looking for 400k in a pre money of 3 uh, million. And the idea is um, going to Madrid, uh, bringing more traction, and, and then going international. Of this, we have 20% uh, more or less committed uh, with a fund in Austria. Thank you. Thank you. And the other co This is the operational part of the whole yeah. <laughs> So some come, some ask it uh, goes through. So which is your business model? Because you were talking about 1,100 bookings? 11,000 bookings, sorry, the last quarter? No, 1,600 GMB. 1,600? Yeah, 11,000 was GMB. Okay. So then, which is your... Basically, uh, just like any other marketplace, we, we charge a fee per transaction to, to, the, to the partner. So just as global as, the only thing is a little bit more complex uh, because of the curating part. But we, if you book an activity of 15 euros, we take up to 30%, uh, from 20 to 30% of that transaction, and, and the rest the partner gets it. But the idea, the idea is to make this subscription model for the senior part. So right now, how to scale super fast is, is commissioning the supply part. Yeah. But you want the demand to build this 30 euros per month and you get the health covered mm -hmm. for the cultural uh, space. That's, that's the idea, that's what we are in the yeah. Q4 master plan, basically, this is the, this is the feature. Super hacky feature. Yes. What is the amount of the of the round that is already covered? It's, uh, we, we close a ticket of 100, and in, in between 100 and 150, we can store. How are you working the user experience? Because old people, many of them tend to have problems with technology. How are you working that? Okay, as you see in, well, in May, we launch our own code, basically, because of that. We hire a UX designer, and she is, she's ex Rappi from, I don't know if you know Rappi from Latin America, and, and she's awesome. And basically what we do is we have a user that has time, so we uh, do a lot of shadowing and testing with the app, and we developed a, a really cool web app, and now with the experience of that web app, we launched the actual app. That if you look at it and, and you're under uh, 55, maybe you think some things are awkward, but for seniors it's amazing. So we're building things, taking into account their opinion and, and their savviness with technology and not, not, not ours or trends, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a huge part of it. How are you doing the testing? You make focus groups with people that age? No, we, we shadow a lot. So basically, we put a camera, we give them the, the, the beta and, and they start using it, we tell them like, uh, go and book book something or look for this activity you like a lot. They look at the they book and we film everything how they do it because there's a lot of things that for a native uh, um, user. digital user is, is easier than for a senior and, and we make those things as obvious as possible. And you should talk with Fidel probably because they yeah. nice I know. emotions <laughs> I know. and I you know. them. Yeah. yeah. How do you acquire customers and what's your customer acquisition cost? Cool, that's, that's a great question because one of the, the great things about not being a native is that they are digitized. If you look at people in benches, they are with their phone browsing and, and, and scrolling in Facebook and Instagram, but nobody's targeting them. So my, my cost per click is under 10 cents and acquiring a sign up user uh, last month was 16 euros. So, so it's quite amazing because we have like 75% or um, traffic from digital, from Google and from Facebook, and it's really cheap. That's the reason we spend uh, a 
since now, uh, for all the things we've done, we spent uh, a little bit more than, than 190k. And, and that the reason is we, we acquire users really cheap, and, and the partner side is, is a no-brainer for the partner. Right? But you acquire the user really cheap because no one else targets these users? Exactly. Nobody thinks we, we are able to acquire people, and we, when we started, that was the biggest question. We said, like, yes, we can do it, and now we have the numbers to show that. And you've only tested that in Spain? Have you tested that in other countries? For now, we only tested it out in Barcelona, and actually then in Spain, because some campaigns, for some reason, didn't filter the, the, the audience here in Barcelona, so any the traction went even better. But we don't have okay. traction in, in Madrid. How does the name relate to that age group? But I'm sure I'm not really familiar with Babuk so well, but the name and the age, what has the relationship? And the, basically, Vermouth is, is, a, is an old drink. And basically, the... the, the, um, the you have a lot of free cash. Yeah, when oh, you okay. drink a Vermouth uh, in, in most countries, Latin American countries, and, and here in Spain, Italy, and France, is when you go to, to drink a Vermouth before uh, dinner or lunch, and you share a Vermouth, you know? You don't, if you're sad and lonely, you don't drink a Vermouth. <laughs> you know, with, you know? So it's something you share, so, so we thought, it, it, and it's something really catchy for them, and the brand awareness and the recognition for them is super quick. Have you thought of game, uh, game mechanics for seniors? Applied game mechanics for seniors? Game mechanics? Yeah, gamify the, the app. Ah, yeah, we've done that, and we're actually doing it. We, we actually copycat a Boy Scout scheme, basically a pyramid in which you can be leader of your own activity. Now we have like 21 leaders in which they can lead. Basically, we have like a journalist that now is leading her own um, reading club or book club. Uh, we have a, a photographer that leads the, uh, a course of photography, things like that. Mm -hmm. Then we have ambassadors that basically they do our quality assurance. All the new activities, uh, we give them the first time they go for free, and they have to fill up a quality assurance form, so we know if, it's, uh, if the quality is, is up to the level we want. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to avoid the control. Para adelante. Hi everybody. Um, my name is Federico Aguilar and the CEO of Gloria. We provide an insight and engagement platforms specifically for life science companies. Healthcare is a complex scenario where many different actors come into play. Patients, doctors, pharmacists, healthcare organizations, and life science companies. COVID has accelerated the digitalization and converted even the most uh, technical areas. We are at an inflection point in achieving your decisions. But let's focus on life science companies. Uh, life science companies. Uh, they have relied on very large sales networks. They have taken non-database decision making. And um, the worst of the, the situation is that the business model is incompatible with the new empowered digital customer. You may be wondering if it's too early or if it's too late. The most important um, consulting firms are assuring that life science companies must shift the business model in this exact moment. Just, uh, <laughs> um, just to, for you, maybe you are not coming from the life science industry, but we are talking about pharma, medtech, medical devices, and bio, uh, biotech companies. <coughs> well, our solution is Gloria. It's a data-driven engagement and insight platform. What we achieve with that, what we provide to the companies, well, they can decrease the, um, the operating cost, they can provide um, better customer experience, so they can improve and increase the sales in a profitable way. Our unique value proposition consists in a platform that captures HCP doctors' the data, interactions in our own platform. Why they are going to use a platform? Because we add value to the daily, daily, uh, daily work. Uh, the other, sorry. 
Um, the other point that is very important is uh, the information that is coming from the business. We provide an engagement platform to capture all the interactions that are not actually being in the dashboard, the digital uh, interactions of the doctors. And then we have an app list to obtain data from other different sources like an ERP and so on. But it's, what is the core of our solution? The core is what we capture the information and what we provide to the company to make better decisions uh, business-wise. That is the core of our solution. And imagine the gold mine that uh, results of uh, providing a company, a life science company, the possibility to understand what is happening in a doctor, what is prescribing, what is the recommendation that is given to patients. In terms of um, the market size, we're talking about that huge market because we combine two different markets. It's the engagement or CRMs, analytics platform. But also we are talking about the medical marketing that is a huge market. Um, what is, a, what is a <laughs> the, the competitive analysis? Our um, competitors were well suited for the digitalization in terms of internally speaking from the, from the company's, company side. But they were not prepared for this rapid change and digitalization. So with Gloria, we provide uh, just one stop shop solution for all these set points. And we address, as I mentioned, to the ACP or behavior analytics that is uh, our main goal. What is our business model? Well, we have a white label <laughs> OEM platform for uh, companies that wants to have the channel. Mm -hmm. Then we have just insights to provide information about decision-making processes for life science companies and our own SaaS solution. Well, hope to market. Something happened with the tech. <laughs> um, so right now we have uh, an enterprise customer that is Royal Canning. It's a uh, animal health. It's not human health, but it's the same. Uh, we are working with the bumpers. And we have open opportunities with Novartis, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, and uh, other big players in the, in the industry. Uh, just to ramp up, uh, well, the, the team is very important in this case because life science companies uh, require specific um, skills. So we have uh, well, um, uh, biomedical, and, da, 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 uh, legal, medical, and the CTO to merit uh, this a real SaaS solution. So you're raising 600k at which pre money? Yeah, we are uh, aiming to be good uh, 15%. Between 15 uh, we have a soft commitment of our first investment, especially in bigger capital, a follow one of up to 300k, and we are looking for the Lead investor, uh, lead investor to to complete uh, the round. It looks to me that the platform is you can use for many many things. Why aren't you choosing like a niche market within all of this? Because there's many types of customers want to sell to many use cases here. Why have you decided not to focus on something? Yeah, that's, a, that's a excellent questions. We um, we know the the industry and we know that. There is a, a lot of potential in the city that have to change. But it's a, it's a good point that the platform per se can be used for many other prescribing industries, that could be the construction and so on. But since our main core is the uh, consumer behavior analytics, uh, that part is very specific on the industry. But in, uh, for other type of solutions, could be the same technology, but in a different industry. I don't know if I'm answering the question. Well, actually, it was the opposite question. You know, why don't you focus on one use case or one industry or one customer? Ah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> this is because you're selling to pharma labs, to mm -hmm. consumer goods company. It's totally different styles, no, cycles, no, it, In fact, it's the, the same persona because we are always trying with a prescribing um, medical doctor. And in the case of the Royal Canyon, for instance, it's the veterinary doctor that is at the same, uh, the same behavior. It's exactly the same. What is the use case for that model, Kelly? What, what, what are they using it for? 
Well, they, um, they are using our MVP. They have already 1,200 uh, already uh, users. They are using specifically for what is called medical education. Okay. And with the analytics that we can provide is that we, we offer a better um, um, customer experience. We can provide a better uh, learning process that is one of the main core of uh, life science how to um, yeah, you know, this, uh, uh, how they learn and how they can prescribe. Uh, but isn't, isn't that the biggest opportunity that you really have? The, because there's a massive name for education in that, well, for the HEP, for, for education. Totally. This is uh, one of our main solutions. It's true that it's, uh, it's a space where there are other competitors, mm -hmm. specifically for learning. Mm -hmm. But when we combine added value solutions to the ACP in, this, uh, in our own uh, application, is when we have more frequent use and when we uh, have a better uh, proposal for the user. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. More questions? And the current MRR, sorry, the current MRR today? Yes, we um, have a, a, two, a 2,000 uh, MRR okay, so with, uh, with the customers. Um, it's not the, in the case of Royal Tani, that's our first customer, it's not the full um, value that we are achieving, but it's, uh, it's uh, just uh, one site we are trying to expand to other Royal Tani's uh, across Latin America. Well, 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 well. I hope you have enjoyed a lot. You have learned, and um, and that uh, for the entrepreneurs, I hope this experience has been great. Uh, for the investors, I hope you like all of some of them. Now is the networking time. We have an hour for uh, networking. Uh, talk to each other. Uh, much, do so much, and um, still learning. Uh, enjoy the bar offering. Um, I will just. We have the. On the rooftop also. Ah, it is in the rooftop. Okay. Both, both. Oh, it is in the rooftop. Okay. So let's both. go up oh, here and there. <laughs> so we can split depending from. Some of you may like the heights. <laughs> 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 because, oh, um, okay, enjoy. Bye.